we're going to look at these two subtraction problems. Now, just like with addition, I always like to keep my subtraction problems separated by place values, so I draw little lines there to make sure that the ones are with the ones, the tens are with the tens, and the hundreds with the hundreds. Let's start with the problem on the left. Just like with addition, always start your subtraction problems with the smallest place, in this case, always on the right. So our first problem here is 6 minus 5. I know that 6 minus 5 is equal to 1. 1 will be my answer. Next I have 1 minus 8. Now here's the thing. If I start with 1, it's not possible, possible for me to take away 8. So what I need to do is I need to go to the hundreds place. I'm going to borrow 100, and what that means is when I take away 100, there's one less in the hundreds place, but if I'm adding 100 to the tens place, that's equal to 10 tens. So that means that 10 plus this 1 I already have here is equal to a total of 11 tens. Now I have a total of 11 tens. I can subtract 8 tens. 11 minus 8 is equal to 3. And now I'm able to move on. That's called borrowing. We just went to the hundreds place. We took 100 and we turned it into 10 tens so that we could subtract 8 tens. Last, we have 8 minus 2 for a total of 6, and the answer of 631. Over on the right, let's go ahead and look at this problem. Now we're starting with 4 minus 6. Again, you can't start with 4 and take away 6. So we're going to go borrow a 10. We're going to change that 10 into 10 ones. So now we have 10 ones plus the 4 ones that we started with for a total of 14 ones. And now we can subtract 6. 14 minus 6 is 8. We can move to the tens place. 8 minus 7 is 1. 3 minus 2 is also 1 for our answer of 118. That is how you complete subtraction with the standard algorithm.